So given a graph, we're going to go from slope intercept form to standard form using inequalities. The first example is going to be a little bit more detailed. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instruction. And then the other two, I will just proceed as I did in example one. So for the first example, I'm given a graph and my directions ask me to write and write an equation in standard form. So I'm going to look at the graph that's given to me and I'm going to identify my slope and my y-intercept so that I can set it <clears throat> to y is less than mx plus b. So you may wonder, well, why are you saying less than? The reason I'm saying less than is because there is a dashed line and it's shaded below. So in a previous video, I discussed when you can determine which inequality to use. So since it is, again, dashed and it's below, that means less than. If it was dashed and above, that would mean greater than. If it was a solid line and it's below, it would be less than or equal to. And if it was a solid line and it's above, it would be greater than or equal to. All right, so back to this problem. What I wanna do first is identify my y-intercept because that's easy to see. And that's where my graph crosses the y-axis. So it is at the point two, which is really zero two. All right, and then my slope, well, I can pick any point on the line that is, I personally would like to look for a whole number. So it looks like around here, which is five. So from my y-intercept, what did I have to do to get to that other point, point five? So I had to go down. Now, pay attention to the units. They're counting by two. So I went down <clears throat> by two. And when I'm going down, that indi indicates that I'm going to have a negative sign. So negative two. And then I had to go to the right. The right tells me that that's going to be positive. And I went over to that point five. So this is five, zero. And then my y-intercept is actually zero, two, just for those people that want to know what the coordinates are. All right, so once I have identified my slope and my y-intercept, again, I want to put it in this form. So putting it in that form is going to be y is equal, not equal, y is less than, I take my slope and I substitute it here, negative two over five. I have an x there, so don't forget that. And then whatever sign goes with that b, that's what you would use, and it just happens to be a positive two. That is if I were to look at the graph and put it in slope intercept form. Well, my next step based off of my overall directions asked me to put it in standard form. Standard form is ax plus bx equals c. Now you have to pay attention because you cannot have fractions. You a, b, and c, your coefficients have to be whole numbers. So this would not work. I'm going to go ahead and start moving items over. So let's just take that y is less than negative two over five x plus two and start trying to move it in the correct standard form. So I'm gonna move this over by taking the inverse, which is positive two over five X. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That will leave me with two over five X plus Y is less than two. Now I said A, B and C have to be a whole number. So this represents A and it's not a whole number. So in order to make that a whole number, what I would have to do is I'm gonna multiply everything by that denominator. So multiply by the denominator. If it was a negative two over five, I personally would multiply times the negative and the denominator. And I hope I have an example like that so you can see what I'm referring to. So my denominator, is five. This is my denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything by distributing that five throughout the parentheses. When I do that, will this five and that five go away? So I'm left with two x. And then five times y is five y. And I have my less than sign and five times two is 10. This is now in the standard form that I was trying to put it in, that ax 
plus B X is equal to C. And it has whole numbers, right? So since my, what I want to point out here is since my Y is positive, that means that I don't change my sign. This sign stays the same. Now, if this were a negative, I would have to flip that sign. That's something to pay attention to. Now, what I like to do is I just want to verify that this is the correct form, um, standard form for that graph. So I'm going to verify by looking at my origin numbers or points and my y-intercept. You can use whatever points you want. These are the ones I happen to like to use. So I have two. My x is zero plus five. My y is zero, and I'm saying it's less than 10. I'm taking this information and I'm substituting in zeros for x and y. <clears throat> When I solve for this, well, this goes away. That's a zero plus another zero. So zero less than 10, is that true? If it's true, which it is, that means that the origin is included in my shaded area. So if I go back to my graph and I see my origin, that's zero, zero, it is included in my shaded area. So far, I'm on the right track. And so now I just go to where my y-intercept is and I substitute in for my x, it's still going to be 0. But this time for my y, it's 2, less than 10. That goes away, and I'm left with 10 is less than 10. Is that true? No, it's not. Why not? Because it does not have that or equal to sign to it. So if it is not true, that means that it's going to be a dashed line. So let's see. And we see that it is, in fact, a dashed line. So my graph does match my standard form. Now, this is just a bonus. Let's say you were given the standard form to begin with and you were asked to graph it. What I would suggest, and this is the same graph, is that you would just find your y and your, your x and y intercepts, which means that you would take x and substitute a zero in. So I'm gonna have two times zero plus five y is less than 10. And now you just simply solve for y, so that goes away. y would be 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So at the point where x is 0, y should be 2. Is that true? Yes, it is. All right, so we proved that one. Now, if we were to go back and put a 0 in for the y for so that we can find our x-intercept, it would be 2, um, 2x plus five, and this time you're putting a zero in for y, and you're checking to see if this is true. Two x, well, this is really so people can see what's going on. So x is less than five, which is really my point five, zero. And so if I go to my graph, five, zero, because again, this is counting by twos, that is correct as well. So that is how you would graph it. It, at, it said less than, so I know it will be a dashed line, and then it will be shaded below. So that's a bonus. Going back to what we initially started talking about, which is writing an equation in standard form. So for my example two, what I'm going to do is I see that it is a solid line. So therefore, when I write it in my, it's solid and it's shaded above, so when I write it in my slope intercept form, I am going to use the greater than or less, greater than or equal to sign, this sign here, because again, it's above. And since that solid line under there, that tells me it's gonna be um, uh, greater than or equal to. I am looking for my y-intercept, which is right here. So that's gonna be negative four the actual point is 0, negative 4. And I can find any point that I want to try to um, find my slope. So what I'm going to do is I see my x-intercept here is negative 4, 0. So I'm going to use that. What do I have to do to go from my y-intercept to that point? So my slope says rise over run. So I'm going to rise, excuse my crooked arrow. And I'm going to move, and again, it's counting by twos. So I'm going um, up negative four. And then I'm going to the left. So if I'm going to the left, that I said up, 
up is positive four, sorry. And then if I'm going to the left, that's going to be a negative four because again, it's negative four zero. And I can actually simplify this. So when I simplify that, that's negative one. I just take this information and put it in this form. So y is less than, why am I? Y is greater than or equal to, and in the place of M, I'm gonna put a negative, and then there's an X after it, and then minus four. All right, so this is what I'm working with. Y is greater than or equal to negative X minus four, but I wanna put it in standard form. This is currently in slope intercept form. So to put that in standard form, let's just bring that down here so I have more room. What I'm going to do is move the X over to the left-hand side by adding X to both sides. And that results in X plus Y. And notice is the plus, so I don't have to change the sign, is greater than or equal to, and then there's already a negative four on this side. So it is in that form, AX plus BX, and it equals C. But, um, <clears throat> and yes, and I don't have any fractions or anything. I just have whole numbers, so I'm good. Now I just wanna check it just to make sure. So I'm gonna check it with my origin, which is zero, zero. So it's pretty easy. If I put a zero plus zero, is that greater than or equal to negative four? Well, zero is greater than or equal to negative four. So therefore my origin is included. And then I'm going to use my y-intercept. If I put zero in for x, so I'm using this over here, plus that negative four for y, is that greater than or equal to negative four? And again, that goes away. So I have negative four is greater than or equal to negative four. And we know that's true as well, which means I'm gonna have a solid line. So solid line is based off of this. And then since that is a check mark, that means the origin is included. So shaded above, I should say, actually. And the reason I'm saying shaded above is because my origin is above my line, above my graph. So yes, solid line, shaded above. And then finally, example three, I see that it is a solid line that is shaded above. So therefore it is gonna be placed in this form once I actually find my slope and my y-intercept. So my y-intercept here is one, again, it's counting by two. So you have to pay attention to that. And I'm just gonna find a random, here's a good point right here. So what did I have to do to go from my y-intercept there to that point? I had to go up and I'm counting by twos, but I'm in the middle here. So that's one, two, three. I had to go up three. And then I had to go to the right um, four. So three over four is going to be my slope. And I just put it in this form. So I have y is greater than or equal to, replace m with three over four, put the x next to it, and then plus one. That is if I want to put it in slope intercept form. But since it's um, I'm trying to put it in standard form. I'm going to take that y is greater than or equal to 3 over 4x plus 1. And I'm going to subtract 3 over 4x on both sides. I'm doing the opposite sign, which is the inverse. And now I have negative 3 over 4x plus y is greater than or equal to one. However, I cannot keep that fraction. So in order to put it in standard form, I am going to multiply everything by not only the denominator this time, but remember I said, if you have a negative sign, go ahead and take that negative sign out as well. So negative and four, and what's gonna happen is the negatives will go away. And I'm just gonna end up with a positive three x 
I take this negative four and then I multiply it times everything else. So negative four Y, now I have to pay attention. I now have a negative in front of my Y, which means I am going to have to flip this sign. It is no longer greater than or equal to, it is now less than or equal to, and then negative four times one is negative four. So my standard form for that graph that was given to me is what's shown here. And again, if I wanted to test it, what I would do is I would take my, for me, I used my origin and my y-intercept. The origin is zero, zero. So where x and y are, I just substitute it. And then my y-intercept was zero and one. So again, I would just substitute in. So for the origin, that's gonna be three times zero minus four times zero. Is that less than or equal to negative four? Well, the zeros go away and I'm left with zero is less than or equal to negative four. Well, we know that's not true. So that means the origin is not included. So let's go back to our graph and just double check. So this is my origin. And when I say it's not included, that means it's not shaded. So, so far that's, cor that's correct. And then if I look at my y-intercept and I substitute that in, so three X is still zero minus four. And then this time Y is one. Is that less than or equal to negative four? Well, three times zero goes away. That's negative four less than or equal to negative four. Yes, that is true. So that means I should have a solid line. So again, going back to our graph, I have a solid line. So that is how you write an equation in standard form if you are given a graph. So I also showed you how to graph as a bonus um, if you are given standard form. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Thank you.